StarCraft 1, StarCraft 2, Star League, GSL. This is the closest he's ever been, and now he's on his last life. He loses just one more set. Solar advances to face against Dark again in another ZDZ. Yeah, and stats, we, we've summed it up very well. He wants this so, so bad. He needs two wins in a row. It's got to be on Laralac Crest and then Ulreina for game number seven. I think we will see a game number seven. That's my prediction, Wolf. And this could get really, really close really fast here. Let's jump into game number six now on Laralac Crest for stats versus Solar. Laralac Crest, the map for game number six. It's a very close series. Down in the bottom right in the red, it is stats. And up to the top left in blue, it is his opponent Solar on match point. I swear the cheers get louder every time. He's drinking that green baneling juice. <laughs> That is what it looks like, isn't it? It's, it's got to be he's infested. <laughs> it did say green on it, so that much we know. Yep. They wouldn't use that kind of green for green tea. It would be a different green. Yeah, uh, it's clearly for There's different bangings. words for different types of green. Yeah. Or rather, I don't know. It's not really a type of green. It's not like a different shade of green. It's just they use different words for green in different situations yeah. in Korea. Yeah. Um. So that's not the one for green tea, so I don't think it's green tea. Now I'm like really, I can't even remember, was it Toro that it had on there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> see, I don't even, I, I it like, has to be baneling juice. That's yeah, the, it has that's to the be. conclusion that yeah. we're coming to. Green okay. baneling juice. Korean viewers out there, like, they know what we're talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so this is the epic music when it's game six. Every time this music plays, I have to, I have to point it out. We're, we're setting the stage here, okay? Again, a scout from stats. He sees it's gas before pool after double hatch before pool. He knows that an aggressive strategy might work out here, but it didn't work out from last time. Yeah, and especially in these positions, cross position, yeah. layer lag, it's like, uh. Not really going to work out. You get a nice, fast third base as the Protoss. I think he just wants to play his safe standard game once again. I think he's going to use this uh, one gateway adept for scout, uh, and then he's going to try to take a faster third base with a, a Stargate to pressure yeah. with. So, does Solar go for the same style on this map? We were talking about aggression on this map will be a bit harder with the Banelings. You know, going first you have to break down the back rocks, then you have to go through that very small choke where the rocks once were. Trying to get it up the natural expansion is very hard with the wall already there. We saw how that worked on Dust Towers. Spoiler, it didn't work. Uh, Stats was able to defend very nicely there with the Storm, which he bought enough time for. So I wonder if Solar's just going to play for the late game. You know, he, he's going for a very macro-oriented style to start off. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like, okay, you know, let me let me kind of sit back, get my tech up, because I have so much space on this map. He is up and at match point. I think that Solar's the type of player who's played in so many best of sevens. So many online tournaments he's won the finals is best of seven. I think he knows that he has the opportunity to do another cheese or all in or aggressive type of push to win this game and just get out and thinking to himself like, well, if I do that, I get to game seven. But this isn't the map for that, I think. Kind of echoing yeah, what you were saying. So the I positions think positions too. It's like, uh. yeah. So especially the positions more so than the map, I guess. But at this distance, I don't think that's the right choice. And I think you're spot on the money. I think playing the macro game is kind of the way to go about it. Stats is going to be looking for that as well, though. Taking a fourth base on this map for the frost is not too tough. In fact, uh, the third base that you take, there's one entrance only by ground, and versus this melee heavy style from Solar, we're seeing with these, uh, you know, ground units, these Banelings and uh, Speedlings, and of course the Hydras, but still the, the ground-based army, the melee-based army, is going to have a harder time if he walls this off, as he's already setting up a pile on there. It's just a lot tougher to hit that base, because you can't come from two sides. It's a lot harder to hide your Lings um, and come in as a surprise. Yeah. Quick lair here. Yeah, I mean, he's made eight lings in total, and uh, that's about it. Since then, he's been droning hard. He's up to 52 
Just made two of them into buildings. And then got two more drones. I'm like commentating the worker count there up in the top right. But yeah, the point is he's, he's really pumping out those workers. He's, he is. He is going really heavy on the macro, on the economy here. And uh, of course, when you see a Protoss go for a Phoenix build on this map, too, you know that no other pressure outside of the Phoenix is going to come for a very long time. So you can just do this while teching up. It's, it's, it looks greedy. But it's the right response yeah. to what the Protoss is doing. And he has Lingzhou on the map to verify that no Adepts are coming with this or anything like that. He knows this is safe. He's not blind droning. Alright, plus one attack for ranged. The Hydra is dead. It's going to come up here the second that lair is finished. A few drones get caught here. No big deal. Fourth base is placed. All the Phoenixes are away. There's that Hydra is I was mentioning. Obviously, the two of them. All right. Uh, right next to each other. <laughs> Interesting choice. <laughs> um, but the the tech for stats is in a good place because he, uh, you know, played as a normal kind of path towards his build, whereas, of course, Solar went more greedy for the economy. So he's not going to have these Hydras out for very, or, you know, it's taking him a lot longer. Is Do you think this is on purpose, actually, where you get a fast Lurker Den while upgrading I think your it's, Hydras? It's I definitely think that's possible, the point. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he's yeah. doing. This is like the old days where you saw that double, double roach, roach warren, yeah. warren for the double roach timing. So in this case, you just get the Lurker tech while getting the upgrade for the Hydra. So it's basically just a really fast Lurker Den. Because um, Hydras, of course, without that upgrade yeah. are way worse. They're just almost worthless, uh, especially versus those uh, Immortals in the new uh, expansion. So when you see, uh, when you scout this as stats, you definitely want to start setting up for dealing with Lurkers because they're on the menu. He hasn't seen this yet, though, unfortunately for him. So this is definitely going to be something that catches him a bit off guard. Okay, he's going to get pushed into it seeing it, though. Um, yeah, by these the Lurker den. Yeah, he sees it now, yeah. and he knows what's up. I'm going to go for a two adept drop while he's doing a lot of damage to the economy, but because Solar is just pressing D, he's playing like Liquid Ret right now. Uh, even with all these drone kills, he's still at 82, 83 <laughs> on four bases. <laughs> it's getting to the point where it's like almost too much. I, th I think this is a nice number, uh, but if he makes more, I'll be like, uh, I don't know, I don't know Solar about this. He's lost like 16 drones this game or so. I'm just looking at your computer. Uh, so, I mean, definitely a lot of damage done, but still. Great economy. High Templar uh, on the way. And that's going to be one of the answers to this. Stats is you know, continuing pumping out those Immortals. He has a charge coming up quickly. Plus two is also up very early. So this is definitely you know, a comp that he can deal with. And he, in fact, did deal with um, in one of the games earlier in this series. He's had more trouble, frankly, with the Banelings uh, than actually dealing with the, yeah. the uh, Hydra and the Lurker comps. So we have Storm on the way now, but these very fast Lurkers are already being more seven of them at a time. And I mean, he's he's got all the tools he wants. I suppose he could go up to Hive here in a bit. Uh, only has plus one attack for his ground units so far. I may want to commit to getting some more upgrades out. I, I suppose that's like the only thing, but I, I think right now he just wants to spend his gas on units. Yeah, uh, more and more Lurkers being pumped out here. And they're coming across the map now. Right now, all stats is trying to set up a fourth base, and this is when he's most vulnerable. All these units are out here. The thing is, it's lose lose in a sense. If he just stays in his base and doesn't make a fourth, he gets further behind. But if he takes a fourth, then his army is vulnerable against these really fast lurkers, and he's letting him get into a perfect position here below the ramp. This is not good for stats. Oh, this core goes down. It looks like he was microing his warp prism at the same time as just clicking back his army. And it worked on Dust Towers, you know, where he just had a warp prism out on the map and just stayed on three bases for a longer time. There's a lot of Hydras back here this time, which means he can kill these units really easily. Not going to kill the Warp Prism. The lurkers, are all, off. the lurkers are all alone at the bottom of the ramp. I suppose uh, Stats doesn't know about that, but that would be a nice catch if he wanted to go for that. There's no support for them. He just got his first Observer, so there's no way for him to know. He just got that out, and he's got a second one on the way being chronoed, so he wants to have this vision control, but... Had he known, that would have been a huge opportunity for sure. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Storm is done. Looks like he's only got three High Templar. Yeah, he's got three. May want to make some more. It looks like he's committing more to the Immortals. Yeah. He has seven already. He's making two at a time. Oh, he's going to try to hit this army. It's coming down the ramp. Oh, uh, the Lurkers are coming out uh, front. Command. Yeah, he needs to be careful with those. Now he's spreading them and splitting them. A big, big reveal on them. 
Storm is ready, as you mentioned. Good hold position on those Zealots this time. Not going to throw those away. Yeah, Stats wants this so badly. He has to have perfect control to fight against this army. It looks like he's going to come in now. There are the Storms blanketing all the Lurkers in the back here, but the, the Zealots all get crushed. He needs more, you know, he needs more support for these Immortals. He's allowing these Lurkers to actually push forward. And he has more storms here. He needs to use them. Needs the storms. He's going to take it slow once again. He's warping in to bring back the army. Again, that's so many zealots. And the Hydra's fighting alone. They're not going to do a good job against all those immortals and the storms. Yeah. He's going to finally clear up these spine colors, which means these zealots can start to get to the meat of this army. So reinforcements are cut off here, which gives stats more time. But don't forget, stats is again still stuck on three bases. He doesn't have that fourth nexus up. But this move, it, it does grant him another opportunity to go for that fourth. Yeah. He and has he kind of held here. Look at look at his bank. He needs to spend some of that. Yeah. He needs that fourth base, and he will finally get it. And a fifth base comes up here for Solar. Meanwhile, six more High Templar was that bank you were talking about. He's going to have so many storms, almost too many. The Warp Prism goes down, though, so that's a bit unfortunate. Uh-oh, here come the Lurkers, though, but there's storms already on top of them. This was a wasteful move for Solar. Yeah, this is what he did last time. He cannot have those Lurkers just burrow too close to the Protoss army. At this point, Stats could just fight this. He he's looks like he lift, might. He's going to lift the Lurker here. There's a couple on the left, but he's basically only fighting Hydras here. There's a bunch of Lurker eggs in this fight as well that are not going to be useful. He's just going to kill those for free, and Stats is going to push forward here. Archons are dying, but there's so many Immortals here, and this is the bulk of, of Solar's army right now. He's losing so much money in the supply, and he doesn't have a bank, and Stats does. Yeah, and look at this, only one Lurker left over from that fight. I think Stats could end the game right here. He's got another War Prism. Yes, he does. He's got 10 Immortals and 5 Archons. If you do not have Lurkers to deal with this, he's only morphing 2. And one got like game one. Yeah. This looks a lot like Game it 1. It really, really does, and all these Immortals are still uncontested here. Plus 2 is about to finish here for Solar, but it may be too little too late. Really nice concave for Solar, but it just doesn't look like it's enough units up on the high ground shelling those Immortals, but the Immortals are too tanky and doing too much damage. It looks like we're going to get that set, Game 7 that you predicted, Valdez. Here comes the push up the ramp. Reinforcements are getting cut to pieces, and he still has a ton of bank. GG stats! Bringing us to all arena. We're going to game seven. If this tournament has not disappointed, all of these best of sevens have been a roller coaster. And stats, we said it before, he wants it so bad. He played that map so perfectly. The control dealing with the lurker attack there at that fourth base was just so smart. Using that war prism to constantly pull the army back and just buying enough time to eventually get that fourth base. And a couple of control mistakes once again. Looking like game number one from Solar, and even game number two, where he just gets out of position and he loses too many units and then decides to take the fight because he has to. Uh, I feel like he could have played them a lot more patiently. He had control of the map for so long. He delayed the fourth base for so long. He had a fifth base. He had adequate defenses prepared for the Zealot drops and the Adepta warp ends and, and things of that nature. He had spine crawlers up. He left enough hydras at home. I feel like he did panic a little bit, you know? I feel like he, he, he could have maybe tried to get up to high tech and just slowly play that game out, but this yeah, is not how the, I mean, that's not how this matchup is being played right now. It's like kill the fourth or be killed by 15 plus immortals. So there is no there is no high tech in this matchup right now and most of the time. Yeah, I mean we we've seen some Zergs try to work it out. And uh, we were talking about the position on that map specifically, how I thought it was going to get there. But uh, as you were saying, you know, Solar just wants to play that style. And had he controlled it just slightly better, it, it may have even worked. You know, he had a huge number of lurkers very fast out on that map and had a massive economy. And uh, if he just didn't try to force it there at a couple of those fights, a couple of those moments, I think he, he definitely could have had a better chance. Now we're going to Arena, game number seven. A lot of discussion with stats here in this seventh game. Yeah, he's not even in the lobby yet. Yeah. He's, he's really discussing this one before going into it. This this is, you know, if you win this, you go to the finals against Dark. This is a huge this thing. This is everything. Thousands and thousands of dollars difference in prize pool as well for the finalists versus the semifinalists. So there's so much on the line here. Yeah, and even more so than that, we've said it before, stats. He hasn't had it in eight years. He wants to get there. And try his luck at getting a championship, finally. And by the way, guys, we mentioned this last week. The announcement didn't come out, but there will be a big announcement about the Grand Finals in this uh, in this broadcast after this Best of Seven is over. So please do tell your friends to tune in. 
for, you know, if you don't care about the announcement, fine. This is the, like one of the best series we've had in this tournament, so people need to tune yeah. in anyways to get people informed about this, okay? Reach out.